Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to the second video of my mandolin building series. I am still waiting for the wood that I ordered so that I can really go ahead with actually building my instrument. But I thought while I have the time, I'm going to give you a quick run through through the little workshop that I set up here in my sister's bedroom. So let's start with this here. I put up my little workbench here and put a belt sander in between. This thing is going to be mainly used to take some of the wood and make, perfect, uh, make it perfectly plain. Some parts of the mandolin require a really nice plain surface so that other parts of the mandolin can be attached like the fretboard on the plane. Uh, this table is adjustable and um, I've put some uh, kind of fine sandpaper on so far and I've been practicing a little bit um, but um, this seems to be working fine. I can put a lot of pressure on this and it's, and it's holding up. And so yeah, that's the very first part um, right here in the middle of the room that I'm gonna um, use. I am also going to use this saw. I showed you this saw already yesterday in the video. It's kind of like a, a small tiny band saw um, or like a cheap version of a band saw and it's pretty cool because it has an adjustable table um, so that I also be uh, that I'm also able to cut in angles. Um, and I've practiced a bit with that already too yesterday. That seems to be working okay. Um, I still need to practice more of getting straight cuts, but this is a really important tool because I'm going to make 90% of the cuts that I'm going to make uh, with this machine right here. Right here on the other side, we have a drill press. So um, with by just turning the lever here, you're going to be able to adjust the, the height of whatever bit is in the drill press here. And what I have in here right now is, I think you can see this, um, this um, sandpaper disc, which has um, these sandpapers uh, going on top. And I'm going to use this thing to actually carve out some of the excess wood of the soundboard and the backboard of the mandolin. One thing that is kind of not pretty standard is this thing here. And it's really, really cool because um, this is a, a just a measuring device that is going to be able to uh, measure um, to the 0 0.001 millimeter. That means it can measure tiny differences in height, which is going to be important for the uh, height of the um, or the depth of the backboard and the soundboard so that I can actually tune the soundboard that the mandolin would sound nice. The really cool thing about this is that this, um, this, this pod keeping it here has a magnetic lever that can be turned on. So if I put it on on, I can barely move it. If I put it on off, I can just lift it up. And that's pretty neat. And this is a really important tool um, that I've never used before in my life. And as you can see, if you only move it a little tiny bit, you see that the small um, little clock there runs a couple of times around and that shows you how small the increments um, are to measure things here. I of course also have some smaller tools. Um, I'm going to use a Dremel um, also to mainly um, uh, use it to uh, cut off uh, excess wood. Um, that is something I definitely have to practice. I haven't used Dremels a lot, um, but it's going to be really nice um, and helpful to, to make a, a nice edge uh, and binding uh, for the mandolin. I also have this little block plane that I showed you yesterday already, this really tiny little thing that is also going to be used to carve uh, the excess wood out of the sound in the backboard. Um, and um, this one is really important because um, it makes really tiny cuts and it's going to be able to make really uh, smooth and nice curvatures. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That is the little workshop that I have here with my with the bench over here and the other parts over there um, and I hope that I'm going to be able to um, build everything with, with those things. I've been trying to not spend a lot of money on tools because the whole idea or at least part of the idea is to spend less money than I would have um, to spend buying a completely new menu. The last thing that I want to talk about in this very short video today is about the process that I'm going to go through. So. Um, Today is still a testing day and tomorrow probably too, um, pretty much every day until I get the real wood. It's going to be a testing day, by which I mean I'm going to try to get learn as many skills on those tools that I'm going to use as possible so that I don't mess up anything with a really expensive wood that I, where I only have one shot. Because if I break the soundboard or if I destroy it in a different way, it's like 40-50 bucks that just went to waste. and then. Buying more and more would kind of 
it would just not serve the purpose. So I'm trying to get as many skills as possible with the machines that I have. And then on the day that I'm getting the, the, the actual wood, I'm going to start um, producing uh, the mandolin. I have never done anything like this, so I'm really excited to learn all these new skills. And there are many, many possibilities to fail here. Um, but that's okay. I mean, uh, it's the first time that I'm doing it and uh, I'm not expecting a, a masterpiece. Um, I'm expecting to learn and if I'm doing it right, in a, in a right way, by really carefully doing what I do, I am also hoping to have a really nice mandolin at the end. And with that, I want to end this week's vlog already because I think it's the best to just do a couple of short videos in the next couple of days uh, with a few updates that are easier and faster to watch than having one uh, huge movie. I hope that you are going to enjoy the whole mandolin building series as much as I like um, and enjoy prepping and organizing all around it. Uh, if you do, I want to remind you to subscribe. Button, 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 unlimited buttons to subscribe. And also check out uh, my other videos. Thanks for watching.